Welcome back to our video module on statics. I'd like to continue our conversation on center of gravity and centroids on um, today. Uh, first, I want to clarify something. One of the things that we talked about was uh, when we have homogeneous material, we use a centroid. When we don't, we use center of gravity. Now, no matter what, we're going to look at um, we're going to look at weight. Um, a lot of the times when we're looking at these at these materials or at these bars, these basketballs, whatever the case is, to get a conceptual idea of where the center of gravity is. However, as soon as we go to centroids, we're assuming a, uh, a constant density. And so we then we start talking about areas. And if you think about it, the, or vol areas or volumes, they're basically the same, right? Like, same concept. So if this triangle is full of stuff and the stuff has a constant density well then the distribution of the weight and the distribution of the area they're going to be exactly the same basically the weight's going to be distributed about the area so from here on out i'm going to talk about centroids and areas as i talk about overall our weights now that said i got you got to get to thinking about this we have an intuitive idea of what the center, what the centroid means. However, we don't really have any numbers. We, we don't have any equations. We don't have anything we can really hang our hat on. So I'd like to try and create something today. Let's imagine that we have an X and a Y axis, okay? And we're gonna put a triangle on that. We're gonna say, uh, you know, something like this, a shape where we wanna find out what is the centroid? We want to we want to show what it is. We're going to kind of think carefully about it. We're going to say that this has a uh, an area A, and we're going to pretend like uh, there's the centroid right here at X. We'll say X C. All right. What I'd like to do is I'd like to kind of do a thought experiment right now. Let's pretend that we want to find the sum of all the torques about the Y axis. Okay. We're going to find the sum of all the torques about the y-axis. Now, now, our theory for centroids is if you apply the entire force, or in this case, the entire area at this point, that's going to be the same as distributing the area around the entire thing, if you're looking at it from an outsider's perspective, if you're, you know, if you're outside the triangle. Well, what that means is if we're going to do a torque, sum the torques about y, we're going to pretend like, you know, area is basically force distributed over that space. We're going to take this entire area and we're going to apply it at x sub c. All right. So we're going to take the entire area and apply it at x sub c. Now, if our intuition is correct, that is going to be the same as applying the entire area in discrete, like small increments about the y-axis. So in other words, if we, you know, once again, we'll use our analogy of weight. The full weight is applied right here at this point, or the weight is distributed across the triangle, and it's going to give the same torque about the y-axis. Well, let's take a look at this. What would it be? If we wanted to find out what this torque is, or we're going to do it in terms of area, what this area is. Well, we know that the distance this little sliver is, is, is x away. And we know this small amount is a, is a small increment of the area. We'll just call that dA, all right? So the distance it is times dA, and we're going to sum all these small amounts and add them together. There's our integral. So we take the integral of x dA, and that should be equal to the total area times the x-coordinate of the center of gravity. In fact, what we have here is the definition of, well, what we have here, this is the first moment about the x or about the y axis. We call this qy. This is 
the first moment of area A about the y-axis. This is important. You're gonna have, you're gonna learn a bunch of different moments, but it's important to know this is the first moment of A about the y-axis. Right here is our go-to equation for figuring out where the center of gravity is. You know, if you wanted to take a shortcut, you'd see that A, or if you wanted to take a look at it at a different level, let's integrate this. The integral of x dA. Well, we know the integral of dA is going to be A, and the integral of x dA is going to be the same as the average x value. Now, the values will be weighted based on area. Well, that's going to lead us right back to here. That tells us that the centroid is really a weighted x value based on all the different areas. You can do the same thing by summing the torques about the x direction. We'll come back to this lots. This is the first moment of A about the y-axis. This tells us the location of the centroid. That's what we're looking for. This tells us the location. The, we can use this, we can divide both sides by A, and we can get the location of the centroid. Now, this leads to another concept. Oh, oh let, before I get on to another concept, let's imagine a different scenario. Let's extend this a little bit. Let's extend this. We'll keep our axis, and instead, we're going to now create a wire. And in this case, once again, we're going to do the sum of our torques. We're going to try and we're going to do the sum of our torques and we're going to find out that the average x times the length equals the integral of x dl. And by when I say average x, that's going to be the same as xcl, the centroid of this point. And that'll tell us if we could theoretically balance this in the x and y axes, we could use this axis, uh, we could use this equation to figure out exactly where that balancing point would be. It looks like somewhere around here. Now finally, one of the things we did in uh, right here is we added all these small components together and then we summed them, we basically integrated to figure out what the torques are. Well, the cool thing about this is you can do the same thing, let's, let's, let's section off this area right here, you can do the same thing with basic shapes. So let's say that this is our shape, all right? And we're going to look at this and say, hey, wait, wait a minute, this is a square and a triangle. We could also say that we're going to take this shape and find the uh, centroid, and we're going to add to it, don't forget to move it over a bit, the move over the triangle, this shape to find the centroid. These are the same shapes. Now, of course, this is a bigger, like this has more area, so you kind of have to weight it to, um, you have to weight it so that they, um, they work together. The way you weight it is you simply add the first moments. So the first moment of this shape right here, the rectangle, we'll call this shape one. We'll call this shape two, and we'll call this shape one, two, for lack of a better word, that the first moment of shape one, two equals the first moment of one plus the first moment of two. Now, let, let's, let's kind of flesh that out a little bit. That means that the centroid of one, two times the area of one, two equals the cent, well, let, let's go back to orange, 
equals the centroid of 1 times the area of 1 plus the centroid of 2 times the area of 2. And you can see now we're weighting it. We're kind of weighting uh, how far the shapes are from the axis. And we're also weighting the size of the shapes. In this way, we now can make composite shapes. So if you have something like this, you can see how you can add a big rectangle and then subtract a circle. Subtract two other circles. You can add and you sub can subtract. Now add to this, you can do this in three dimensions. Most of the time you can avoid calculus, which is, you know, gives a lot of people warm fuzzies. You know, being able to jump in and do the calculus is how I generally do it, but uh, that's mostly because I don't feel like memorizing the uh, normal um, the normal centroids for everything. But this is a really expedient way when you get to doing your problems. Keep an eye out for ways you can add and subtract common objects and use their centroids to identify the total object's centroid. So in summary, we've looked at the definition of a centroid, mainly that, or well, we've looked at the definition of the first moment of A about y-axis and how that directs, the, how that relates directly to the centroid. Simply, you know, Q over A, that is your centroid, easy. And we figured out how to find that centroid for strange shapes. Then we looked down and saw that um, a good way to think of it is by composites. If you add these together, you can get really complicated um, shapes with this simple idea. And finally, we can also do it with rods, with strings, with strangely shaped objects like that. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to seeing you next time around when we do